Today I'm going to show you how I connected my DCC command station to my computer so that I could use the JMRI software. I have a NCE command station, the Power Pro, and I simply purchased an Insigna uh, USB to RS-232 cable that I show you right there and plugged it into the DB9 connector on the command station there in the front and the other wire comes over here to the side of the computer with a short extension on it. When you purchase one of these there there are sometimes drivers that are necessary this particular one may or may not require the driver I'm just giving you a shot of the information on it and if you go to the support and downloads page which I already have clicked there it gives you a little blurb on there and down here in the lower left hand corner are the driver drivers first firmware and software that may or may not be necessary to get it working with your computer there's a driver for the PC and there's also one for the Mac I'm currently using a PC and uh, I also tested it on a desktop unit and the desktop unit found the drivers without me having to load them once you uh, have them loaded and let me get a close-up shot of the web address there you go there's the web address you can stop the video and copy that down but I purchased the Insignia from Best Buy so, I'm going to change, I have JMRI running here, and the only way that you know that it is running and, and working is down here in the left hand side, on the bottom of the window, it says service mode programmer NC is online and operations mode programmer NC is online in green and it'll say offline on both those and in red if it is not connected now the first thing you have to do when you're hooking this up when, when you first turn on JMRI for the first time is you have to put in the parameters for the unit we're going to go to that area preferences and connections so at the very top is connections so the screen will come up and it'll look like this the very first thing it'll ask you for is what system do you have so you have NCE and there's quite a number of them that you can select from so you select NCE if that's what you're using and then you have to find your COM port. Your COM port you can find by going to your device manager on the PC and going to the serial inter interface part of it and click on it and it'll tell you the COM port. And the next thing is it'll automatically put in N and the connection name NCE when, once you enter this information and then you save it there's a save button right there okay so if you're not familiar with getting the device manager up go to control panel and in control panel go to hardware and sound and at the top where it has device devices and printers go to device manager 
and then when it comes up you go to ports com and lpt click on the arrow and it, it tells you because it did take the download it's a prolific usb to serial com port and it's in com3 so that's where you get that information and you're through with that now if you have a uh, explanation point over here on the left. Click on, double click on this, and in my case, it says that this device is working properly. But if you have to change the driver, you can click on Driver tab, and then it has Update Driver, and you would click on that, and you would tell it where the driver software software is located. So I'll click on that and uh, browse my computer or search automatically. Well, browse the computer. It's looking for that download. So I'll click browse. I have to go to, there it is. Under downloads, click on the drivers that you want and click and say OK and then you would click next and it would load the drivers and that sort of thing well in fact I will click next so that you can see what the next so it's downloading the driver the best driver software for your device is already installed it checked it that fast and close so I'll close this Close the device manager, control panel, and we're back here. And we can close out of this window. And again, the lettering in the bottom of the screen here is in green, showing you that it is working properly. So if you want to program a locomotive, you select one from the upper list. And we will do the Atlas uh, S4. And I'll get that locomotive to put it on the programming track. That particular locomotive, Union Pacific 1151, is an old yellow box S2 locomotive. And when you add the locomotive, a new locomotive, you add the information in regards to that locomotive on the screen. I'll come over here on this side of the screen and put down programming track. I want to program the locomotive. So it opens up the window for the Union Pacific model that I have there. And I can go to uh, basic programming. Here's 51 for uh, the number that I have for the decoder. And uh, if I make a change, I can read changes. I can read changes on the sheet. I can write changes. I can read a full sheet or write a full sheet. I can just click read a full sheet. And it'll go through reading the CVs that are available. And it only takes a few seconds. And it's done. So it just now read all the CVs in that locomotive. I can go to the CV list. And we have CV1 at 51, CV3 and 4 at 15 each. And the ones in... Uh, I was going to say the ones in, in white are the ones that were were checked, but no, every, yellow and white, I'm not sure what the two designations are, but uh, everything is on there in the CV list for this particular locomotive. So, makes it really easy, really easy. And I was having a, a difficult time... Uh, connecting up the command station 
and finding anybody who knew anything about it. So I figured I'd make this video to help anyone who plans on hooking up an NCE command station. And when you're through making your changes, you just click save and close. And it goes back to the main list, which has all your locomotives on it and the road numbers and that so that you can do your changes. So it works out quite well. That's it for today, and you all have yourself a great weekend.